Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command American Civil War, the Blood and Iron Campaign, which is a free DLC for anybody who owns this game, which looks at the Franco-Prussian War. It takes the game that focuses on the American Civil War, Civil War and extends it to the Franco-Prussian War. This is episode... I believe number six in our Let's Play series, playing as the Prussians or the Germans in this particular conflict. And so far things are going very well. We're at the outskirts of Paris. We've already caused Napoleon III's government to be overthrown. We're dealing with a new French Republic, which is now fighting against us. And also there appear to be some uh, communist rebels as well, uh, fighting on the side of the, uh, of the French as well. So there's kind of like, three parties there's still elements of the french national forces which are fighting us uh which you can see up here there are elements of the french republican forces which are fighting against us you can see these guys here in blue and then in the south we've seen some units in red although i don't see anyone presently uh who have been part of the international which i believe is sort of the international um common communist party or whatever um, the war is going, as I said, very well. We're on the outskirts of Paris. The French had around 22 units not that long ago. They're down to 13, uh, plus the remaining 17 fortress garrisons. Uh, the French national or fighting spirit is at 21%. At 1%, they will surrender, uh, while our own is at 111%. In order to get them down to those levels, we need to either take Paris, which is an automatic victory, uh, but you can see here it's behind a whole bunch of entrenchments and potential fortifications and other things like that. Alternatively, we can take the towns around Paris, uh, which has the effect of cutting the French capital off from potential supplies. So each one of these towns with a little blue star, if you take all of those, France has a percentage chance that Paris will surrender each turn eventually paris will surrender and then you win or all the forces in paris will surrender alternatively though each one of these presumably because of the strategic importance of these towns each one of these is also a fighting spirit objective so like as you continue to take them their fighting spirit will continue to decline presumably as it sort of sets in like oh no we only have five of the cities on the approaches to Paris left, only four left, only three left. Kind of like that never-ending uh, Union flanking maneuver at Petersburg where each entrenchment, each additional mile that was drawn out sort of added to the uh, sort of aura of doom for the Confederate forces within uh, Petersburg. Probably a similar sort of a situation here. Historically, Paris was surrounded and after a lengthy siege, uh, it would surrender. I have a hunch that we won't quite get that far. With their spirit at 21%, we probably don't have to take all these objectives in order to get them down to 1%. That's just my guess. We do have some forces fighting up here for logistical reasons. We're going to try and take Campania and down toward Creel and Chantilly to get the rail lines of, on the northern edge of Paris so we can rapidly deploy troops against these objectives in the north and rear. We have a main force also approaching sort of Paris from the front or from the center. And then we also have additional forces up here in the north taking some key supply centers uh, to keep the logistics flowing. Additionally, we do have some other forces that are kind of fighting largely to just sort of protect our flank from any potential French counter thrust, although I think they lack the strength to really do that. Um, and then we also have some troops in the south, which took Dijon, which was a fighting spirit objective. We're trying to take more territory down here in the south, which I also think has a national morale effect. Uh, and then we'll probably take uh, Langres, which I believe is another uh, supply center next turn. Uh, and then we may turn east to deal with Epinal and some French troops that have been dealing with some difficulty to us near Remont. Um, that being said, I believe we've pretty much already done this particular turn, October 15th. We do have one unit, the second, uh, however you pronounce that, whatever, that needs to be deployed. And then we also have uh, the a couple of new headquarters units which are ready to arrive, uh, which should also aid our, um, our supply efforts in the drive on Paris, uh, keeping everybody's supply up. Uh, keeping our effectiveness uh, as a fighting force up. So we'll move some of these headquarters units forward, which will have a huge impact on our um, supply situation. And then one other thing we need to do is reinforce the troops at Stenae because they keep getting almost defeated. We have two more divisions here, which do I not have enough? They should be on rail lines. I don't know why I don't have an option to transport them via rail. 
looks like they were on rail lines, so I'm not sure about those. They might have been deployed this turn, though, and I just lost track of it between the turns. Let's maybe deploy those new divisions. I'm wondering if it makes sense to deploy them in the north to take some of these supply centers. They don't really matter. They matter to me. Von Manteuffel, you'll be given a pointless command in the north. You're probably better off used over here, but whatever. All right, so that's going to end the turn, so let's go ahead and move forward. Now, the biggest challenge we've really suffered lately uh, has frankly just been one, logistics, and two, the weather. Uh, we're, it, we're deep into the fall in France, and so you get like these alternating turns where you get rain and mud, which has a massive hindrance on your ability to march, your ability to fight. You know, you can generally, if you're like adjacent to an enemy unit, you can still fight somewhat effectively in the rain or mud. Uh, but if you want to move more than one hex in a given day, it's kind of kind of that's the ball game. It really takes away your mobility. And so you saw the French there didn't really have a chance to do much because of the rain and mud. We don't have the rain to deal with, but we do have the mud to deal with still. All right, let's just deal with these these annoying threats to our north. By bringing in uh, additional soldiers. If we were going to bring Von uh, Manteuffel's uh, headquarters in, it only makes sense that we give him some troops to fight with. And then we've got this additional division over here, so the Landwehr division over here. I think we've probably got enough in front of Paris, so let's move these guys here. So we'll take the, out these supply centers gradually. Meanwhile, we do have to take out uh, Lefer's fort up here. This is a supply center. So we'll just go ahead and shell these guys with some uh, artillery. Uh, let's also hit them with some uh, siege guns. We've got some siege guns here firing out of the all. So I believe the reductions you're seeing there mostly are for supply. And then actually, now these guys are reducing the fort itself proper. It should reduce our casualties considerably. We don't even take any casualties here. And we take the town. Can't really advance too much because of the damn weather. But uh, we took that town. So good news there. We could drive up on Perone, which is another supply center up there. But I don't really think there's a need to do that. Can we reinforce some of these guys? Maybe two to four. These guys might retreat. They don't. Okay. Well, we knock that division out up here. Take the town, move toward Crepe. And that now clears the rail line from Sosson all the way down toward La Bourgeret, or however you pronounce that. Let's reinforce those guys. Okay. Only to waste artillery shooting at a headquarters unit, I don't think. So we'll take the first of the Fighting Spirit objectives here in front of Paris at Lagny. We'll approach Bourgeois, or however you pronounce that. Next turn. And we'll also advance south toward Brie Comte Robert. So when you have this many headquarters all in a small space, you kind of get a multiplier effect that you create like these zones of much greater influence of positive supplies here. So you can see like almost everybody's at seven or above along this whole front, which is pretty damn good news for us. Alright, let's move. Let's 
for reams to get, kind of get these potential partisans under control by next turn. These guys are that way. Okay. Current Prince will keep moving up that direction. We'll take Dole. I can't really finish off these guys near Rollins. Just don't have enough strength. I can kind of trip them a bit but then we lose all the experience that we gain from fighting when we have to pull back and reinforce same thing's true for these guys near Zerdi or however you pronounce that so that's that their national morale is at 18% so I'm curious to see how losing how much losing Lang Li impacts them it might be enough to say they'll they'll be done next turn all right but we'll see be interesting if there was more of a resistance at Paris. Interesting they're taking attrition. Usually towns provide some supply. We didn't get a uh, pop-up. Usually we get a pop-up saying like the loss of such and such city has impacted French fighting spirit or whatever, which is kind of surprising we didn't get that. It does look like the French are going to have better weather on this turn. And some new troops are being raised in, in Paris. Meanwhile, this brigade here didn't get to Reims yet, so we're losing logistics support and infrastructure support, which is probably why I can't rail those troops into Reims quite yet. But now that we've uh, got them there, that should be okay this turn. All right, so it doesn't look like an interesting turn. I haven't seen this before. It is raining, so that will have some impact, but it is not muddy. So it's like firmed up ground, I guess. So our troops have decent range of march, but they don't have, well, I guess I, I don't know what like, it, it doesn't seem to... ...influence us much at all. Okay, so let's see if we can take some of these, uh... ...objectives here. Alright, okay, looks like we've got no intel on enemy troops at Champagne. So we'll take that. Fighting Spirit Objective, we'll take the Borgwet, or however you pronounce that. Let's also attack the enemy artillery sitting there. Let's move these troops into the trenches adjacent, so that way they can't use those trenches against me. We've got some international soldiers by the looks of it that are going to be fighting against us here. So they lost two national morale centers or fighting spirit centers this turn. Siege guns forward will reinforce these guys some of these headquarters units forward. So 
So we should have 10, 9, 9, 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 8. Okay, so that's, I think, a good setup here. We'll move these guys forward via rail. And we might be able to take Bree, Com Robert next turn. But basically, the three objectives directly to the east of Paris are all in our control. We'll move some troops forward via rail. any of these guys we can move the siege gun forward nice so they'll be in range to support against paris next turn okay meanwhile we'll see if we can attack the fort at montmedy Get that na or get that supply center in our control. We do. And I'll try and take long way next turn or long way or however you pronounce that. And then we'll keep attacking these uh, imperial troops here near Beaumont. Meanwhile, in the south, I guess we'll link up that rail line here. Our uh, crown prince over there. These guys should be in good supply next turn to begin the drive toward the rear of these French troops. Okay. Maybe we can finally get our numbers to work against the French here in the south. Maybe they won't be able to uh, keep taking these losses. All right, I gotta get up toward here. Again, just taking more terrain seems to improve our overall economy and just generally help. Do I have anything left in Germany? Any those troops at Koblenz or no? It looks like we've railed them all out. Okay. So I think that's going to do it for today's turn. And let's see what tomorrow has in store for us. Okay. The final assault on Paris is about to begin, unless their morale falls so much by the loss of all these towns. Which it seems like they're still above 1%, so... They've got a lot of siege guns in Paris, but I kind of feel like a frontal assault is viable here. They don't seem to be so heavily dug in. And also, most of the, the entrenchments to the east of Paris, these uh, lines of trenches here along the rivers have been abandoned. They haven't been putting any troops there. And so we can just walk in and start city fighting right away with considerable artillery behind us. Although the weather's certainly not cooperating. Okay. All right, let's hit this enemy artillery position. Apparently they have defensive artillery. We'll use up their shells in counter battery fire. I want to take this objective because it'll let me push in on the defenders of Paris more closely with my artillery next turn. Zero to seven. Holy crap. Zero to eight. 
That was a, a bad day for that artillery piece, and they get destroyed. don't particularly want to move my cavalry into the city. I think they will be vulnerable. Let's take Bree. So how will this look? 10, 8, 8. Eh, we don't have the best supply lines at the front here. But our artillery will be in a hell of a good position. Hopefully the weather cooperates, because if the weather's on our side, that will make using our numerical advantage here much easier. these troops here. And I guess we'll just see if we can defeat the fortress at long way, which we can't. Not this turn by with one unit anyway. And we defeated the Imperial troops near Beaumont. Nice. So Northern France looks like we've defeated these forts on the flank and we can begin moving on Miserez or however you pronounce that Rakoi and Hirschen so these northern forts they don't really matter I'm just trying to figure out how to use my troops Guys, we are slowly whittling these French troops in the south down. We can just take that town. Prop might get it next turn. What does that leave the French with? They've got 11 units still. Okay. All right. Their morale will fall a little bit more because we did take another one of those objectives. Hunger in Paris, Paris reduces fighting spirit. So that's because we took another one of those critical cities in terms of the supply line it is like the the furthest east so you would expect it in a realistic scenario it would have a minimal impact like their supplies presumably are coming from the south and the west uh, but in any event all right so we've got french siege guns that are firing against our advanced elements here in the trenches on the outskirts of paris they're continuing to raise fresh troops and presumably digging them in in the city itself. Only the troops to the west of the city are actually in the trenches. Again, bad weather. So we're just going to begin the work of whittling these guys down one hex at a time. We'll use the siege guns here. And it looks like we also in impact their economy. They lose MPPs each time we bombard one of these industrial or city hexes 
to these guys with the northernmost unit because I want to try and also take out the artillery this turn. Right there we go. We destroyed that lead division. We took one of the hexes here. All right, I don't know why I attacked before the artillery bombardment, but we'll bombard them now. Let's see if we can make sure to destroy them. So we got that siege gun. We are now adjacent of the Paris Hex itself. We'll bombard the northern most National Guard unit. There's the Imperial troops to the west. All right, so we attack there. Bring. We'll have three or four artillery batteries here in reach of the center, sort of the capital of Paris. Only have a couple of units adjacent and able to actually attack directly. If the weather improves, we might be able to get more in because our marching radius will considerably increase. Get these guys in these towns should help push the supply forward a little bit. Let's do this. Move Saxony further forward. That doesn't really help much. We'll continue flanking west toward these objectives to the west of Paris next turn. They're down to 8%, so they are very close to collapse. It's possible they could collapse now. Especially if we take, you know, really any more, any more towns. There we go. Got the, got the fort at long way. Okay. troops up to support the only bad thing I guess about bringing more troops into Paris itself is it if you do overcrowd things you can limit your ability to maneuver too much that actually helped a lot that bumped the frontline supply up for almost every unit there That artillery won't be in range. So we're just going to hold off on moving any of these other guys. I don't think we need them. These guys along the railway. just finish the troops down here off the answer is we can't we can't drive them back either okay all right they took attrition despite taking the town that's odd Let's see what all right so the french are going to get good weather in late october here See if they launch any counterattacks out of Paris with those Nash with those nationalist troops here. I don't. I, those are only. That's a brigade. It's an elite brigade. It's got two. It's got a. It's got eleven out of a potential ten strength. But it's only a brigade, which is kind of interesting. They haven't tried to swap a division out. Although I suppose if they're entrenched, that may not be a sound move. Meanwhile, we get rain again, so. These guys are dug in only two, so they're not even in, in a, a fortress hex. We'll go ahead and use our siege guns against them. That should hurt their supply and readiness and morale as well. So you can see right now this unit has 65% readiness, 75% morale. 
They had two entrenchments. Let's see if the siege guns reduce their entrenchments. They do, so their entrenchments are gone. Meanwhile, their morale, their readiness is 61, uh, morale is 67. Go ahead and use our field guns here. So you can see their readiness has dropped below 50, their morale below 50. You can see it's now grayed out actually, which represents a considerable degradation in their performance. I'm also gonna hit the division to the north because what I wanna make sure we do is like, if we just move in and take this one hex, all of these troops around here potentially could counterattack to retake on the French next turn. And so the, the more we can reduce sort of the surface area, if you will, um, and what I mean by that is like the more we can reduce the number of units they can bring to bear against us, the better. All right, so we didn't actually destroy that enemy unit, but we did drive them out. We're going to go ahead and attack these siege guns here. Weaken their ability to hurt us. So let's just launch a general offensive all along the line. I don't know how many of these units I'm actually going to destroy. I like to destroy as many as I can. But at the end of the day, it's more about just making sure they can't launch an effective counterattack, I suppose. attack these troops in the north well because they're too dug in but i'm not sure it'll matter i don't know if they have enough strength with this fourth guard division reduced to one strength one of these back here these guys are, are basically combat ineffective they'll only have a handful of units they can effectively counter attack with so we'll see uh meanwhile do want to do anything anywhere else Hey, look, we're almost to Sedan. Can't quite get there this turn, but the uh, historical location of the decisive battle is within reach. I think it's over. I mean, I don't think they're going to do much with their counterattack. Maybe we can take Roland's down here in the south. Oh, we still didn't defeat him. Let's end this turn and see what we have in store for us if the game is over. France surrenders. All right, so they didn't even counterattack. Germany plundered. Well, who cares about all the MPPs we plundered? We have lots of money. Yay. German major victory. There you go. All right, so the French in Paris all surrendered. I guess all the remaining troops surrendered. Maybe not all their forts or, or did everything. Everything appears to have surrendered. Okay, well, there's nothing left on the map then, right? Well, there's nothing to look at, I guess, which is kind of disappointing. It would have been interesting to see what the French had left. We won pretty early in October, so uh, or late October, but pretty early from a game perspective. The scenario goes to January. Uh, if we take a look at the actual losses here, the total number of units lost by the French was 80 to only 8 for the Germans, um, and they lost 17 forts, so an absolute slaughter. What I will say is like that doesn't reflect what actual casualties in theory might have looked like because it only counts units totally destroyed. That gives you a really false sense of actual difficulty because um, we were very careful to make sure we withdrew units so they didn't get destroyed. But in some, they lost three headquarters. We lost none. They lost one or no brigades. We lost one of our brigades. They lost 35 divisions and we only lost six they lost 22 guards mobile divisions. So the 35 divisions are the imperial divisions. The guards mobile divisions are the divisions that are raised after the fall of Napoleon III by the Republic. And then the internationals are the communists. So all told, they actually lost 50, 61 divisions to our six. Wow, that's a slaughter. They also lost 10 cavalry divisions to our one. And then two French tuers, which I'm assuming are mountain divisions, I think. 
Uh, we didn't lose any of that. We didn't even have any of that. They lost two field artillery units, one siege artillery unit, 17 fortresses, one balloon. 97 to 8 is the total casualties. If we just consider the division side of things, like well, let's exclude the headquarters, the artillery batteries, uh, they lost the 61 divisions here plus the 10 cavalry divisions there. So that would be 71 divisions. And then we'll say these triers are, I think they're mountain divisions. Um, so that'd be 73 divisions lost. Uh, that's a pretty considerable considerable loss for the French. Probably even more decisive than they historically lost. Because the French uh, Chaspot rifle actually inflicted pretty heavy casualties on the German infantry. Um, the German artillery was vastly superior, but the small arms were inferior. Um, and so there were there were pretty heavy casualties at times from that. But yeah, that's Blood and Iron. That's the free DLC, which you can get just by owning American uh, or Strategic Command, American Civil War. It's a game made by Fury Software and published by Slytherin and Matrix Games. Uh, it was a fun scenario. I think it would probably be, I'm assuming anyway, much more difficult playing from the French side because the Germans do heavily outnumber the French once the Germans fully mobilize. Um, and so that would be maybe an interesting scenario to take a look at. But let me know your guys' thoughts. Did you enjoy this little mini series, if you will? Uh, it was only, what, six episodes? Um, or, uh, you know, would you want to see more of this? I think it's pretty cool that they added the Franco-Prussian War as a, as a campaign. Um, I think one of my favorite one from the Strategic Command World War One game is the campaign that looks at the 1914 offensive and then also they've got a 1918 offensive as well so they're more operational and less strategic you know you don't have the diplomacy the r&d all of that um but yeah let me know your your thoughts guys i'm curious what you guys have to say with that being said hey we won so it's over right so that's going to do it for today's episode until next time this is the historical gamer saying thank you very much for watching and until next time i'm out <laughs>